All right, we are here for a second feature match from week five. We have uh, actually a death match here. So two players on 10 losses. We got Ryan D against uh, Andrew, who we saw last week uh, play a very strange combination of ninjas, enchantment creatures, Zer, and uh, all the other fun stuff he had going on. Uh, Ryan, we, we also saw his deck uh, a little while ago, but I think he's, uh, I don't know if it's evolved or devolved here into uh, some sort of a silly, crazy five color or, or so brew. Um, so what's, what's in Andrew's hand over there? Well, he currently has four lands, a Talos Lookout, and a Tolarian Geyser, and he has kept a Pixie Illusionist on top of the library. These sound like normal cards from Dominaria United. This is this is this is this is not what I was uh, what I was promised. But, but the arrow was uh, <laughs> the yeah. arrow is from Kamigawa. Yes, yes, but it's not Jank. It's a good card. Here is the exhibition yeah. <laughs> edition, so uh, good card here. So it looks like Ryan from his hand is base uh, Jund or Riveteers, as it were, in Capenna. Uh, he has a cut down, Urborg repossession, a prize fight, uh, and a couple of legends here. Bo Bortuck, Bone Rattle, and then the not often seen Revaz of the Claw, which is a 3 3 menace. Interesting. That can, uh, I believe you can use it to cast dragons. Um, I could see Maybe. Ryan just playing the card he drew for turn here, which is a Fleet Foot Dancer. So he doesn't have a fourth land, but he has the treasure, which can allow him to cast his 4 4 Trample Lifelink Haste. Uh, Siege Rhino, it is not, but a good card nonetheless. Oh, it's it's still quite good. Yeah. So I'm not sure why he did not attack with his uh, magician here. Seems no reason to not attack there. Um, you know, he can't block the flying, and you know, I think he'd have like that flyer gone if it's gonna if it's gonna help fix if it's gonna potentially help fix uh, Andrew's uh, mana. So seemed. Seemed like a pretty okay spot to attack, and because now, now now the two one can't can't get past the two two first strike. So Andrew's yeah. gonna play his flyer here. Uh, so we yeah we we have a, we have the problem here of uh, no <clears throat> no lands here for Ryan. He does have a prize fight, which if I recall does make a treasure uh, after you're done fighting. Okay, so is that the only card he can cast, or do you have have other options? Uh, that's it. The rest of his hand is all black cards. Oh okay. Yeah, it's cut oh, down, guess... Urborg Repossession, Revaz, Bortuk, Bone Rattle, and his draw was Garna here. So uh, he's far from casting those, and uh, even when he does draw Swamp, he's, he's still just casting one one spell a turn, so uh, he's going to need this Fleet Foot Dancer to, to go a long way here. I mean, Adam doesn't have much in terms of next turn. He can Geyser the uh, Dancer back to his hand, and so... that would... Yeah, get rid of it for a prize time. fight here, but because it's a fight spell rather than uh, what we often see uh, with the these, you know, what we call bite spells, he won't be able to attack. But he is just going to use up his black mana here to get rid of the Talus Lookout. So he's he's identified that you know he can't cast very much. So you know yeah. he, he needs to get this three two flyer off the board, even if it means he's not casting his other black spells for a while, because he needs to survive in order to cast his spells. Uh, this this Fleet Foot Dancer has given him a nice life cushion, though. So, uh, unless Andrew yeah, for has, sure. uh, you know, a, a series of highly, highly impactful creatures, uh, Ryan, Ryan, Ryan's bought himself a bit of time here with uh, 10 life gained. Well, between the between the lookout and this draw step, he's found two uh, creatures in a Network Disruptor and an Automatic Librarian, though they're not the biggest. No, not, uh, not the greatest here, but... Uh... You know, this bouncing of the Fleet Foot Dancer, normally you say, okay, well, it has haste, so you can just play it again. Well, he can't just play it again because he doesn't have a land. But here here comes the land. Not a black land, but, uh, it, you know, uh, he's, he's happy enough to just recast this this Dancer here with the Mountain. Yeah, be be better to cast that, be able to cast something than, you know, miss the land drop and then you're stranded with all the cards you can't play. Yeah. Yeah, so we're, we're seeing, you know, mana mana flaring up here. Well, that's uh, that's quite the draw. It's a, it's a large dragon. Yeah, so that's a 6-6 six, six for 6 flying. It has ward 3 or 4. And uh, yep. you get you get some some wild advantages uh, when it dies. I, I believe it's like when it dies, you either like 
bounce total mana value six or less right. to their owner's hand. Or, or like the other one is like maybe, maybe draws cards. I think it's uh, you mill uh, you mill cards and you return uh, spells. I think. Yeah, oh okay okay. Uh, I got a quick glimpse of it when you bounced over. I think it said mill six and then return two instants of sorcerers. Okay. Yeah. So it's a divination of sorts, or just a big big bouncing. Also of note. Brian can't cast anything. He's facing down a six six flyer, so he's he's gained a lot of life here. But uh, will it be enough? <laughs> That's the question. Oh, here comes another era. This era enlightenment, just such a good, just such a good common here. Just yeah, such value. Scry gain life two two first strike. Like it, it, you know, it takes a while, but he has some time. Here's a mirror breaker. Uh, you know, a good card. Not 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 too much here to to copy. Uh, you know, with the trigger, no. but uh, st still a threat. Um, you know, if Ryan can't cast anything, anything Andrew plays is just gonna look like it's impossible to beat. All right, so he's got a weather I... seed treaty, so he'll 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 untap with a swamp next turn. So, uh, uh, Andrew actually has one of the namesake cards of his deck because they're the Eternal Schemer in his hand. Ah, uh, yes, the Eternal Schemer. Uh... There uh, are there's no enchantment creatures in play yet, but uh, those. But those he sagas, has enchantments that he can animate. Yeah, those sagas will uh, might might be coming to attack at some point. Not this turn, but. Uh, yeah. If I remember correctly, Zerg gives death touch and lifelink and some form of ward. It's a uh, it's just hexproof. Hexproof. Oh, it's, it's just hexproof. Ah, yeah. so it's uh, even yeah. even better than ward. I posted a screenshot a few days ago and of a best of three draft of my opponent. Uh, they were attacking me with the world spell. I was uh, quite surprised to see that occurring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not every day you get attacked by a world spell. Yeah, 7-7. Seven, seven. Which, requires, which requires two mythics. 7-7, seven, seven, death touch, lifelink, hexproof. Uh, yeah, it was, it was not a fun time. I, I, uh, I did not win that game, as it were. But uh, so he's got a little ninja here to get in some extra damage. So this pixie looks like he didn't attack with it. He he needs it for for something. I guess not. Well, here comes the dog. Look at this dog. He is uh, vicious. It's usually, it's 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 a bit infected, usually, as it were. Usually the spirited companion is uh, you know a, a good a good dog here, but uh, it's uh, he's turned rabid. I think. Right, so, uh, Zer, uh, Zer, kind of, Zer kind of does that to people. He is, uh, he is pretty evil. Yeah. So Ryan has, uh, you know, at least the ability to cast uh, one impactful spell a turn. But uh, I think Andrew's got enough ahead here that uh, not sure if he can play catch up with all that's going on here. Um, I mean, you know. his saving grace is that he has a lot of life. He has a lot more time than he otherwise should have. So he's drawn a Lagrella, but he actually can't cast it because it's blue. So I think he's going to opt for the Maria's Outrider here just to stem at least the attacks from the small flyers. But uh, it's interesting that the dragon didn't attack. I guess he, he values being able to block the 4-4. Yeah, it's just like Kyrie is the only thing that really stops the 4-4 from really attacking. Besides maybe the dog, because it had a death touch. Yeah, but if Zerg goes away, then that, that goes away. Exactly. Like, what happens if you attack with a 6-6 six, six, and then, like, Zerg dies to some removal? Then yeah. your blocks are looking pretty bad and you're at a really low life total already. So. Yeah, so I, I, I still think, like, despite the advances Andrew has made, Ryan is still in an okay spot here. He has more cards. In hand, obviously, as you can see, Andrew has way more creatures in play. But yep. uh, so we'll we'll see if uh, cards in hand versus cards in play. We'll see if Andrew can kill him, kill him fast enough that Ryan well, can't deploy his cards. But uh, I, I it looks like Ryan is probably going to be okay, especially if Andrew doesn't start attacking with the. If Andrew starts attacking with the six six, Ryan's in bigger trouble but if he leaves it back like he has done uh you know it's giving ryan chances to to put it to put the game away here and the reflection of kiki jiki 
copy le- no no legendaries okay no, you just it's, messed it's over it's like the original kiki jiki you, you, you can't actually target a legendary because it, it'd be quite cute to just like make a copy of Kyrie and then just get a death trigger every turn yeah so they they, they worded it exactly like they worded the old kiki jiki which uh, stipulated non legendary um so that i guess it wouldn't target itself or something like that but uh yeah, it's well, I, uh, it cannot it cannot copy a legendary. So uh, we've seen in the past year, couple of years or a year or so that they do print cards that let you disregard the legendary rule in in certain cases. But uh, that's, yeah, that's not one of them. It's it's mostly for commander for yeah, most cases. Well, we've seen Helm of the Host, Vesuvian Diplomacy. Uh, yeah, there was just that artifact in, in Neon Dynasty that just said legend rule doesn't have, apply and all that, but. Uh, Legend rule does apply for Kiki Jiki, and it can't it can't even target legendary. So he's he's got a full defensive mode here. Um, so Andrew's just counting on his cards on board being better than what's in uh, what's in Ryan's hand. I mean, the thing is, everything you have is already on board. So I don't know what the difference will be from this turn and next turn. Besides, you know, you could use the reflection of Kiki Jiki to probably yeah. make a spirit companion. And draw a card every turn. If there was ever a turn where that you, <clears throat> if there if there was ever a turn that you could start attacking with your six six, it's the turn where you have three death touch life link creatures back on blocks, right? I don't I don't know if this eight eight is going to do much. There is a first strike death touch life link on the other yeah, side. Yeah, I think you might have disregarded the fact that uh, it's going to get munched up here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so, it may, maybe just wants the card draw. Yeah, but that's a bad creature to give away, I would say. Yeah, yeah. I it's think, the only I think one he that might have just. I think that might have just been an oversight there that he uh, he did not clock that that creature had first strike on top of all the other abilities it was being granted. So if he wanted to throw away a creature, he could have just thrown away his one one token to draw a card. So he has yeah. drawn a, a land here, Riveteer's Outlook, which will get him another swamp to be able to cast more things but uh losing that outrider is big so now andrew can can pretty happily safely start attacking with his flyers i think well andrew has just drawn a card he's probably never casting this game it All is right. farewell oh i don't think he's ever casting farewell on this board ah, well he's uh he's he's gonna ship in his librarian for uh for a good dog a wise choice I mean, why not? It's basically on this board you draw an extra card every turn, and it comes on a one-one death touch life link. All right, so he's decided now is the time. Um, yeah, I don't hate it. He should be attacking with his uh, token as well that he made, right? The one-one. Yeah, the yeah, anyway. yeah. There, there it is. Zero's coming in too. The flying. So he's just going to attack with all of his flying here, uh, and he's going to hope that Ryan can't can't answer all of these things with his hand, and uh, we know that he. He can't. He has. He doesn't have. Uh, his only interaction hand is Lagrella, and that doesn't. Uh, um, it does actually provide a clean answer to the uh, to the dragon, the six six dragon. But he can't cast the Lagrella. And after that, there's still Zer. There's still the reflection of Kiki Jiki. You have to get rid of. Yeah, there's, there's just, just so there's many just things. He just, he just spent too many turns not having. Like he was. He was not drawing lands. He was screwed on mana and screwed on color, which is. Um, you know, maybe a hand that he needed to to mulligan, but he had the he had the magician, uh, and then he drew the fleet foot dancer that put him up on life. So he figured he'd have enough time. So now he's getting an island because uh, he drew the appropriate fetch land with the maestros. I believe it's theater. Uh, so here's Bortuk. It's going to bring something back into play, uh, presumably an outrider. It he has domain five. Yes, he, he, does, he, has, he has all he five He just got an island right now. Okay. I mean, th- th- that rider would be good here. It's still a solid 4-4 flyer, but, like, you know, the five damage matters less when your opponent just has a whole bunch of lifelink in play. Yeah, I think... Uh, I think Ryan's fighting a battle that he might find uh, is going to be hard to win. But, uh, you know, he's, he's putting up a fight. He's not dead by, by any means, but, uh, you know, he's got to find answers here for... For a six six flying, yeah, it's not it's not looking great. Oh, <laughs> Zerk can pump the pup 
to be a two two and then the reflection to be a three three. Is he just uh is he just showing off at end step here? I guess so. There you go. I mean look at that. I, I mean I didn't realize that could happen on I kinda missed it. So I guess he showed us. There you go, yeah. Yeah, he just has onboard pumps for his enchantment creatures. It's <laughs> cute. He showed us. Uh, I I don't think it would work for the Arrow of Enlightenment because the mana cost is the same as the power. But uh, oh yeah, sure. If the mana cost is 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 higher than than the power, then uh, yeah, you can be, he can be a little tricksy. All right, so he's gonna still send with his six six flyer. So the four four effectively means his one one flyers are done attacking for the time being. But the 6-6 six, six can still stay safely get in. And uh, so can the little, little good dog token here. Yep. I don't foresee anything being blocked. So unless he has, happens to have another Bortok in hand to get back the Outrider. He has an Urborg repossession. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, so that's why he's doing this here. He does get to draw a card. If he draws an untapped land, he could kick the repossession and still cast uh, Outrider, which he has drawn, so he gets to do that. Oh, actually, I think uh, he, he might have missed lethal. He could have put a creature in front of the dog and just had the Mirror Outrider get killed by Kega, bring him down to five because of Garna, and then just bring back Gar the Outrider to kill him. Oh, yeah, just yeah, put a put another creature in front, I guess. Yeah. Hmm. Makes sense. I mean, it's not easy to see, but uh, yeah, he, it was there. But he also had like zero to potentially just pump up the one one to make it a two two, and also just gain more life. Okay, so he's gonna go for Lagrella here. Yeah, so he probably could have engineered a situation. Yeah, so chump with the outrider and then block the spirit the spirit companion with something else. And get him down low enough that the Urborg repossession kills him. That that is, yeah, that's a line. So here comes Lagrella. He might take Zer here. I don't think he should be taking any of his own creatures, but could take the Exhibition Magician, I suppose. Yeah, don't hate it. Yeah, so there's the ward. So he'll be able to play the ward and then still play. I guess his uh, Revaz of the Claw. I mean, uh... So what's, so, what's, so what's Andrew's other card? He has Farewell and... Planes. A planes, which he's going to discard next turn, probably, for his Reflection. The Reflection uh, doesn't make, just make you discard cards. Oh, it doesn't? It just does it without... Oh. Yeah, it's, it's pay one tap, make a copy oh. of something. I'm thinking of a different card then. Perhaps. Oh, you don't even have to discard. Okay, I, th I thought you had to discard. Okay, oh, it's, so... Um, I was thinking of... I think it was called Jaxus from uh, Streets of New Oh, yeah, 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 I understand. That had a very, very similar text box. Uh, okay, so... Now that Zer's out of the way, this Fleetwood Dancer gets to attack with pretty much un un uninhibited. Well, I mean, uh, it can trade... I think on this board, uh, trading is fine. Because yeah, you get two creatures out of the way. You get two dork. I mean, you know, Andrew has a lot of dorky creatures lying around, so I don't think yeah. Andrew's too sad. But uh, Ryan will get a card out of this. So Garna is uh, is showing her worth here, uh, giving Ryan some extra cards to start solving these problems. He's, he's actually engineered like a... He, he has quite the multicolor creature suite on his side. Yeah, well, he he is running, I believe, a Joda. So he's oh, going okay. for the five-color legends uh, build here. Oh, that's neat. So if he ever draws a Joda, his entire board gets pumped by, uh, you know... Plus however, four, plus four? However many, however many <laughs> legends. They're all legends. So so, so if, he, if he, by chance, draws a Joda next turn, uh, his whole board is plus four, plus four. Uh, oh man! So he's drawn a second Urborg repossession. So this is going to be actually quite difficult now for uh, for Andrew because he's going to have two two shots at Outrider. He's going to have Outrider, and then when it dies, he's going to get it back again. Oh yeah! So we are 
you know, once again, seeing the power of Urborg repossession, uh, you know, anybody who's played, uh, you know, a any amount of uh, Dominar United Limited has come across this card, whether they've been the one casting or their opponent's been casting it. And uh, it's, it's, one of, it's one of the almost ubiquitous commons of the set. It kind of defines some of the, some of the way the format is played. I mean, that and Mary Outrider, right? The domain deck is just like, you play Mary Outrider, so, sometimes the win con is just ma Mary Outrider and then bring it back, play, play it again, because that's just, it does five damage every time you play yeah, it. Yeah, it works with Micromancer too. It's pretty, pretty gross there. Like, Micromancer goes and gets it, Micromancer dies, you use it, Micromancer goes and finds, man, yeah, maybe even a second or more repossession, or just anything else. One mana, so, uh, yeah, Andrew definitely had, uh, both, bo I give both player style points for, <laughs> for their boards, but, oh, yeah. uh, it looks like this Maria's Outrider is just gonna pull it out here. Uh, very, very unique board. We'll see. We'll see if Andrew can find something in time. But even if the Outrider dies, it's just coming coming right back with another Urborg. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I I did say Farewell might not be cast this game, but I think it might actually be end up being cast. You just might have to exile. Yeah, this Mary Outrider. The thing is that uh, you know Andrew can't really put Ryan on a second copy of Urborg repossession in hand. Um, yeah. You know, this Outrider has already come back uh, once from Bortuk, twice from Urborg. Like, you know, Andrew's thinking, you know, how many ways could he possibly have to get it back? Well, in Dominar United, it's, uh, you know, many, A many lot. ways. Many, many ways. Very, very, very... Uh, these decks are very reliant on the recursion, which is... Uh, I've seen a lot of players, or I know, I know a lot of players have opened uh, specifically Midnight Hunt, because it has a lot of just playable graveyard hate, like cards that you would want anyway, that just incidentally hate on the graveyard just pick off those key cards from the graveyard so uh i have seen or know that quite a few players went in that direction uh you know one of the reasons why they went there is to to sort of try and stop these recursion loops uh because anybody that's that's able to do them and you know have a stable life total which herborg repossession helps because it gains life um you know they do eventually find a way to win by looping or recurring things yeah it's like I feel like this is we don't see recursions that gain life at the same time. Yeah. That often. Very rare. And you know, this this one does it for one mana, which is the cheapest you could probably ever get for it. So Yeah, and like look, Andrew has been doing a lot of things this game. He has a six six flying, he had he had his Zerg going, he had he's drawing two cards a turn, and uh it still might not be enough to just, you know, beat Outrider entering the battlefield four times, right? Yeah. It is I mean, he has drawn quite a bit of land with his extra draw steps, but yeah, he's been kind of, like, doing everything his deck wants to do, and even then, like, you know, just the sheer power of just Outrider in a domain deck and playing it multiple times. Yeah, this is this is sort of the conclusion I've, I've seen is, like, you know, I've, I've opened Offset the entire, the entire league, and I just feel like when I face these... I mean, I, Ryan has opened Offset as well, as you can see, Nuka Penna, but... You know, these uh, Urborg repossession value decks, I just feel like I can't keep up. Um, even if I do, even if I am doing everything that I want to be doing. Like, looks like Andrew's doing everything his deck is supposed to do. Um, yep. And still looks like it's not quite going to be enough. And Ryan stumbled. He was missing mana. He was missing uh, just black mana. And he was on three and then four lands for a long time. And still looking like he's going to be okay. I mean, yeah, he's at one. He can't even afford to kill any of his, any of Ryan's creatures unless it's Garna. Yeah, or if it's or if, or if they're attacking. But uh, yeah, so Garna's just here. He can't even attack. Uh, yeah, he can, he he can't do anything here. I, I think this might be time for the farewell. But oh, yeah, he drew a spirit of companion. But the thing is, he, he he can't even he can't even win with farewell because there's the face up uh, haste creature in Ryan's hand. Yeah, we can't forget the stuff that's under Lagrella, right? Like he oh, still yeah, like there's yeah. there basically two creatures in there. Yeah, the the exhibition magician will make a, a second creature. Yeah, so even farewell, usually the answer to everything. Um, you know, there's multiple ways that the farewell is not going to work because it'll give Ryan two creatures, and you know we see the face up haste creature there. And he's just going to keep drawing more cards. Uh, 
You know, I do like creatures that, that draw cards when they enter the battlefield. So uh, I can't say yep. I'm, I'm terribly upset about all of this, but, uh, you know, I, I like drawing cards, but, uh, you know, they have to be the right Wait. cards. <laughs> Wait, hold on. He also could have had lethal. He could just copy Network Disruptor, made it so oh. the 4-4 four four was tapped and just hit, equipped the thing on one of his flyers. He had 10 damage. Hmm. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, he would have had 10 damage. And and I, well, I suppose it's hard to miss on a board state. Yeah, you know, you're, you're facing down. You're at one. You're against Garna. You're like you're thinking, I gotta find a way out of the situation. Oh. And sometimes you you just miss lethal. Does he? Does he? Ugh. Oh, does he? Yeah. He has suit up. Okay, so but, does suit up? Suit up adds what? It's it's four power total. It it makes something base added as four or five. Yeah, that's not enough. Oh, he he has seven damage, but uh, yeah, not yeah, not enough. Yeah, this Garna is gonna gonna pull in here. So uh, I don't know if he just disregarded the, the the text on Garna or you know forgot about it. You know, both players have uh, not seen things this game. You know, there was a there was a line where Ryan could have won. Now we have a line where Andrew could have won. Um, you know, Ryan attacked his creature into a death touch first strike. Here, now we see Garna is going to deal the last point of damage. So uh, an eventful board, lots of cards you don't see uh, together at the same time in play. So uh, very complicated much, board for, for both players to parse. So, uh, uh, but we too, much, see, too much Dominaria on the mind. <laughs> Not enough. See Ryan here. I, I, I imagine, uh, I think Ryan's just playing every legendary he has access to, I believe, even if they don't do a lot, like a Revaz or... Uh, yeah, why not? Uh, let's see what else he has. He's uh, he's looking at the board now, but uh, he'll, go, he'll go back to his sideboard. I know he's uh, he's advertised that he's just playing uh, all his legends. I mean, if he has Jota, why not? Like every legend is like an anthem essentially <laughs> at that point. Yeah, and they and they find more legends too. Yeah, I did play Jota once in a draft, and uh, when it worked, it was it was very satisfying. Um, at other times, the mana just. Didn't, didn't let me do much. Oh, and you get to cast free spells off your spells, you know. It's always been, like, a really strong mechanic, especially for limited. Well, every every legend, as long as you have smaller legends in your deck, gives you a double anthem, right? Which yep. I don't know. It's uh, kind of kind of ridiculous in that, in that way. So it looks like he's still surveying the board um, rather than going going to his actual sideboard. Maybe he, uh, maybe he stepped away for a moment or something because uh, he's he's just on the looking at the looking at the battlefield mode here. But uh, is Andrew considering doing sideboarding here? What's he, what's he looking at? He has a lot of good rares in his sideboard, but they're a bit hard to cast. <laughs> uh, he has Temporal Firestorm, which is double red, but obviously he's just splashing red for like Hinata. And Fable the Mirror Breaker. Right. Yeah, well, I think with Farewell in your deck, you know, you don't need to stretch your mana even further for, for the oh, yeah. Firestorm. Makes sense. Though, uh, as we saw there, Farewell was not, not actually a, a way out. I guess if he had, like, some... If he had the information we knew, he would probably... He could have played Farewell just to exile all graveyards. He, that could be an option too. Okay, so he's he is finally going to sideboard here. Um, so his deck looks uh, pretty pretty meme-ish here with all of the the legends. Uh, there is there is actually a uh, a board wipe in Ryan's in Ryan's pool. We did see him play it uh, in one of the future matches in previous week. Depopulate, but it's not actually presently in his deck. Probably a bit too hard to cast, I imagine. Yeah, he's he's his, white is like his lowest. White and blue are just like he, he's just playing legends that have white and blue, and the rest of his deck is based uh, John Dor of Tears. Um, so the white and blue is just for legends. Like that's why it took him so long to cast the Lagrella. Well, he has a one lander here, so uh, unless he's feeling really confident about drawing lands, he's gonna send it back. So here's a here's a hand. <laughs> uh, he he has Joda in his hand, so that's fun. Oh, I already like it already. The fun um, scale. So he has a 
Oh no, no. <laughs> He's putting Jonah on the bottom. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> but he can he can really actually realistically cast it here. Um he has Carplusian Forest, Mountain, Weather Seed Treaty, Big Score. So between that, he actually has five 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 colors. Oh yeah. He but he's decided to get rid of the Joda. Sad. Sad for us. Uh but uh yeah. you know, pro probably like in the end the right move. Because the other card in his hand is Radis Firebrand and Hostile Takeover. So uh Oh man. He's gonna have plenty Hostile to do. Hostile takeover. Here. Hostile yes. takeover. A house of a card. Yeah, so the thing is that between the Weather Seed Treaty and the big score, he actually, you know, could produce all the colors. But uh, he's just going to... He's going to play it safe here. He doesn't want the Stranded Jota. He doesn't have a Legend to follow it up with right now. He has uh, yeah. he has Radas Firebrand, which is uh, associated with a Legend, but not Legendary itself. Yeah, but it still works off Domain, so very good card. Oh, yeah, that, that's just a premium card. Uh Yep. You know, you're, 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 if you can cast it, you're just going to put it in your deck. So he's going to go yeah, so, uh, brand. Next turn, he's going to cast Weather Seed Treaty and likely get an island. He could get another Swamp because he's drawn uh, the Black Black Green Legend, uh, Spawn of Turg here. So he, he's got stuff to do. So it, uh, it was a, you know, it was sad to see Jota go to the bottom, but uh, probably correct in the long run. Uh, so what's Andrew looking at here? We haven't on his, well, uh, as we've seen, he played a two-drop that scribe two into yeah. a three-drop that scribes two. He put the uh, a good dog on top, Ooh. Oh. and uh, in his hand is another land, a geyser, a golden tail disciple, and another air enlightenment. So not really heavy on the power scale, but his creature his creatures will find him stuff to do. He's gonna yeah, he's gonna have stuff to do. He's gonna be able to defend himself for the most part. Um, so this Radis Firebrand, uh, I believe, cannot attack profitably into the library. It would just be a trade. It can it can make a creature with less power uh, not block this turn. So here's a Weather it's Seed. Kind of, it's kind of funny because in the scope of, in general, you you're happy when your two drop trade for your opponent's three drop. But in this case, when your two drop is just better than your opponent's three drop, you know, <laughs> it has such an impact. You don't yeah, want to do that. So want to trade. The thing is, is uh, yeah. That was a 2 2 first strike, but he can uh, he can make that not block if he chooses. Oh, here comes the doggy. How many spirit companions does he have? It feels like he has infinite. Well, he has at least two. Oh, oh and there, there the era has scried a Xur. Oh, look at that. Timely Xur here. I assume he's keeping that. Yeah, Xur, Xur especially good with these head, with these uh, era of enlightenments because uh, just because of the first strike. Oh, he's got another legend here, an uh, Ivy Gleeful Spell Thief. So, uh, this is a silly card that doesn't seem like it's going to do much. He could, if he wants to, uh, fire off the Hostile Takeover, but I don't think he needs to do that just yet. I think he can probably wait for Andrew to play a couple more things before he does that. So, here's the big score. Maybe he can redraw his Joda since he shuffled his deck. Here's hoping. <laughs> okay, so he's drawn meteorite and an exhibition magician. Uh, I guess you, I guess you gotta play some uh, lesser cards like meteorite to make your mana work. Sometimes yeah, he signed in the meteorite. He did like notice that aside from the six, oh, six I see. his entire board was dead to meteorite. Right, like all the errors of enlightenment, the fable, the mirror breaker, all the little creatures. Like you know, the last game, how many creatures? did not die to a meteorite that were in play on Andrew's side, right? Oh. So he did side that in, actually. Did not mention that. He sideboarded very quickly, uh, but he did bring that in. Right, here come, I like the all-out attack here. Here come the brigade. He's uh, he's, just, he's more willing to attack into his opponent than he was uh, last game. Well, Obviously, a, last game was different. widespread thieving off the top. Which is a hideaway enchantment that was rarely played. I uh, I think you get treasures when you hit with creatures or so something to that regard. Is it the red one? Yeah, it's a red hideaway card. Uh, it was very rarely played, so uh, I I I, I, I don't even know what it does at this time. <laughs> I know people played the blue one. The white one was heavily played because yeah, that card and the, the game. Yeah. Fight rigging and rabble rousing were, were very big time cards. 
the blue one was played sometimes, and the black and red were usually uh, left left by the wayside. Well, this firebrand is about to take a chunk out of his life total. Yeah, but he's at 12, though, so... Uh, you know, but this hostile takeover... If, if Andrew deploys more things, this hostile takeover is going to be looking pretty good for him. Well, it's going to be what the card says. It's going to be a hostile takeover for the game. Yeah, and he'll be able to, and he'll, he'll, he'll be able to hit Zer with it, too. Okay, well, funny enough, uh, if he doesn't have a 6th land, he cannot target Hinata with hostile takeover. <laughs> Uh, well, he does have a sixth land. I don't know if he knows this. Oh, oh, well, he has video right as the sixth mana. Yeah, he has the sixth mana. Uh... Spells your opponent. Oh, spells you I cast. Believe. Oh, spells your opponent. Oh, it, it's it's gonna cost him two more. It's gonna cost him two more actually if he wants to keep his firebrand alive. Oh, that's pretty funny actually. Because it targets two things. Yeah, this is Hanada's, uh That text does not come up that much in Limited. Uh, I know in Standard, people were using it to make their Magma Opus cost two mana. But, uh, yeah, that line of text does not come up as often as you think. Ah, Right Spread Thieving says, whenever you cast a multicolor spell, I believe you get mana or something. Or you get a treasure token. So every time you cast a multicolor spell, you get a treasure token. Then you could pay uh, one of each color, and if you do, you get to you get to cast the uh, Dex out card, the hideaway card. I mean, that's pretty neat with his deck. A lot of his car cards are multicolor. So he's drawing a Maestro's Charm. I believe that uh, it deals. I, I I can't remember what the removal mode on that is. I believe it's five damage. It deals sure. five damage. Yes. Uh, so Erg spawn a turd coming in and coming in and making a treasure. Oh yeah, well uh, yeah, he has a Nyalan as well, so that can also make make one. So here's Zer. So now he's got so he uh, now he's got a, a unbeatable uh, defender or attacker here and a hexproof death touch first strike. <laughs> uh, Hinata's coming in with the flying. He can't block that two two ever. Um, well, uh, you could do it to prevent two damage, right? Which uh, uh, might be relevant here because if you block it, you don't die to just a Hinata attack. Yeah, well, now he now he basically has to cast the uh, hostile takeover, and he does have the mana. Yeah, he'll even give him another treasure. Now, which one do you kill though? You can only kill Zer or Hinata, but I guess if you don't, uh, Hin if you kill, yeah, Hinata represents more damage. And there aren't exactly any uh, any enchantment creatures left after the takeover. Yeah. So what's left in Andrew's hand here? He has a suit up, a spirited companion, and a golden tailed disciple. So he does have a couple of enchantment creatures that he can deploy. Mm -hmm. uh, he will deploy one right now. So. Yeah. Here's the doggy. Yeah. So this is all going to get wiped away here. Well, he drew a, he drew a Talarian geyser, so he still has quite a bit of stuff. Okay. And, you know, the suit-up actually just represents lethal with Zer, because uh, if he takeovers and doesn't actually have a blocker for Zer, he will uh, take lethal. Yeah, hopefully he sees it, because we did see in the last game that uh, the board was a lot more convoluted, but uh, there were opportunities for each player to win, and uh, there was just so much going on that uh, they, they, hadn't, they hadn't seen it, but uh, I think Andrew will come to the right conclusion here if... Uh, if if he does untap with this with this Zer. Yeah, so he is basically has to has to cast this now. Target one creature to become a one one. So it looks like it's gonna be Hanada. And then gonna make his uh, Radis Firebrand survive the damage. He has to pay the full seven. Gets the treasure back, but uh Does he have a land? No, he doesn't even have a land to gain uh, gain life here. With uh, he, and for hostile takeover, do you have to target both creatures? Yeah. No, well, no, that, it's that, up to one. He he could have decided okay. to not to not target his uh, Rados. But uh, okay, so but he 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 can't put put Andrew really on a pump spell here. Yeah, yeah, I don't like, think th so. Like this late in league, you can't really assume anybody's playing a pump spell, but uh, suit up is a good one here, especially with Andrew's strategy. We see he wants to put a bunch of small attackers in, so 
suit up just uh, lets yeah. you attack with small creatures. So, uh, yeah, another eventful game here. I wonder what would have happened if uh, Joda came down and started cascading, but uh, I suppose we'll never know. But we have a third he game, so we have plenty of time to uh, see some more unexpected cards get cast here. What other legends were there? Oh, he has, well, he, uh, only casted Ur he only only casted Urga that game, but uh... yeah, well, he 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 drew he drew a he drew an IV. He had Nial in his hand. There were there were opportunities. Okay. Oh, I've just I've just noticed now that uh, that uh, Andrew has a Ratadrabic of Urborg in his deck. Ah, yes, Rat Ratatouille, as I call it sometimes. Uh, well, that th that would be good with uh, that would be even better in uh, Ryan's deck, I would think. Yes, but uh, I believe he has in his deck to like make it so that his, his legends that if they die, you know, they'll still be around. Yeah, well, I mean, he has some pretty impactful legends, as I think most people do at this point. But uh, yeah, particularly between Hanada, Zer, and uh, his six six dragon, very protected. Yeah. All right, so another another <laughs> another interesting. Uh, you know, when, when you're a five-color deck, your opening hands are always going to be uh, interesting, for better or for worse. Uh, so he, he, he actually mulliganed that because he, he couldn't cast anything. Um, but he did have the potential to draw into lands and play things, but th this, this hand he's going to keep for sure. Yeah, Andrew has a similarly restrictive hand. He's deciding whether to keep a hand of all planes and a dog with the rest blue cards. But he's on the draw, so he has more opportunities to get that blue source. But how if he many, doesn't, he's going to be stuck. three planes. Uh, I think. So, I think. Yeah, he decided to keep it. Yeah. So here, Andrew's going to keep his hand. He's going to keep uh, his three lands, Weather Seed Treaty, Exhibition Magician, and the Hostile Takeover. And he's putting, uh, or he was, a, he was about to put a card on the bottom, but now he's rethinking if he wants to. Uh, Put his Agnes the Dragon Lash on the bottom, which is oh, uh, Riveteer's River. Yes. It makes it makes treasures when haste creatures attack. So he's actually oh, yeah. he's actually opted for the uh, for the Exhibition Magician on the bottom. He has a Weather Seed Treaty, which is kind of just a better version. It gets a land rather than a treasure, and it leaves you with a one one rather than a two one. So it's a little bit better than the Exhibition Magician, I would say. Okay, so Andrew Andrew kind of drew one of the better lands in his deck because he does have some red cards can cat red cards in his deck, and he has, you know, more importantly, drawn the blue source. Yeah, I'll, I'll always had it as we uh, as we yeah. say sometimes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, here comes the dog. Find him another card. So uh, both are off to uh, you know they're setting up here. Ryan oh, yeah, ramping yeah. Andrew, uh, you know, drawing a card here. So you know they're both setting up pretty well. Oh, you know, you know what's better than a dog? A dog that has a ninja as its master. Oh, is this the prosperous thief? Yes, it, it could be. It, it could potentially the, be the prosperous thief. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. We we saw him make uh, great use of that. Oh, he's drawn another molten tributary. That's pretty yeah, nice. Yeah, fantastic. He he no longer has to worry about blue. His man is kind of all set at the moment. Yeah, here's the prosperous thief coming in. He gets a treasure here even. So, uh, you know, things, things are ticking here. Uh, Ryan can uh, now start attacking with his Agnes here. Mm -hmm, okay. Making treasures. Oh, he... Andrew does have a Tatsunari Toad Rider. Oh, yeah, that's a black card, right? Yeah. It's whenever you cast an enchantment spell, you get a 3-3 three, three Toad. And then that 3-3 three, three Toad drains your opponent every time you cast an enchantment spell. Yeah, and then you can... You can give them some sort of evasion, I think. Yes, if you play like one or one in either high green, hybrid green, blue. Yeah. All right, so it's gonna make uh, so, a treasure here. So he's just he's just loading up on treasures, and his hands full. So looks good here. Here's the Toad Rider. Yeah, our opponents are literally just pl the both players are just playing. Uh, three power creatures that get treasure when they hit. Yeah, the, the problem is that Ryan has a, a hostile takeover here. Oh, okay, I see. And it's it's and both of his creatures can survive because he gets a pump here from the weather seed. 
So you can actually uh, have both of his creatures live through this. Yeah, that'll be quite brutal. Um, I with, mean, with only a big score and herb repossession and a land in hand, I imagine this this is the turn he wants to do it. The I mean, is, the all... does have a bunch of cards left in hand, so. Uh, yeah, exactly. Like rebuild. usually, usually when your opponent board wipes, you're just like. You know, in limited, typically when you board wipe, your opponent has almost no more gas in hand. But yeah. in this, uh, in this situation, yeah. mind you, he's also taking nine here. So what are Andrew's well, options now that he's uh, lost his board? Well, he's found a Hinata the Dawn Ground. Okay. And now he could, ca and then he could follow it up with a two mana Intercessor's Arrest if he wanted to. Oh right, that works. Let's see if he. Uh... See if he realizes that, or if he wants to do that. Yeah, it's it's hard because uh, I don't think it shows it until it's until the Hanada's in play that your thing would cost less. So, like even me, unless I was looking out for it, I'd probably probably go right right past me <laughs> that I could cast my three mana spell for two mana once I cast Hanada. Okay, so he 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 has, he's just gonna intercessors arrest now, okay. and play era. So I guess he didn't. Uh, he either didn't realize the interaction, or he just wanted to conserve his treasure for something else. Okay, so he's keeping Radadrabic and a golden tailed disciple on top. Okay, not bad. Yeah. So, so Ryan has a big score here. Um, so you can discard his Jewel Thief and then get it back with an Urborg Repossession, or you could just alternatively just play the Jewel Thief as well. Yeah, he has options. Uh, I personally might like using Big Score here. Yeah, he might even discard the Urborg Repossession, but uh, we'll see what he decides. It's like he, I, he wants all these cards, so... Yeah, he's just going to discard the Jewel Thief. He can get it back with Urborg. He's drawn another Urborg, even. Okay, so and with all the treasures, he can actually kick it and cast the jewel thief again, or even weather seed treaty. But yeah, so all these treasures are actually letting him do everything he wants to do. Yeah, Dominaria getting a bit of help from a place where it has all the treasure. Yeah, so uh, you know, I I I personally think they've they went they went a little overboard on treasures in the last couple of years, but uh, they they scaled it back. At least in Dominaria, we didn't we we, we don't have them. Uh, so they're, they're not a part of our game, but uh, they are here, and they're having a big impact on this game. Yeah, for sure. Is it is it wrong to maybe play the Weather Sea Treaty here instead? Uh, I think you could save Weather Sea Treaty as a pump spell, right? Yeah. I think just playing his domain has to be better. The, the domain, domain is currently four. Four, yeah. And uh, no, because yeah, Jewel Thief already has Trample. And then he's going to put more trample on something else. So yeah, he's just going to play his jewel thief here. So this is just uh, we see the power of treasures. Yeah. Yeah, some nice mana from uh, nowhere. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, so the, at the, least he's the Agnes plus life. the Agnes plus the big score just gave him all the treasures, and he even has one left over from this jewel thief. Here comes Hinata to uh, try and save the day, perhaps. I don't believe this makes the Weather Sea Treaty cost one more. Well, here's a Joda. Uh, he has no legends, but uh, this is kind of what he came here to do. <laughs> well, he has one legend, but uh, it is plus two, plus two to the entire team. Uh, of legends. Oh, it's only legend. Oh, yes, yeah, that's true. Yeah, it, it doesn't. It doesn't. Uh, Joda does not bother with uh, the, the commoners. So, alternatively, you could play the Weather Sea Treaty. Yeah. I mean, Jordan is a 5-mana uh, 5-5, five five, five, which is good on its face. Actually, you could play both. Yep. You could play both Joda and the Weather Sea Treaty. Yep. yep. Let's see what he goes for. Well, I'm sure he's just going to do that. He has, another, he has even another Urborg repossession in hand, so if his things go away, he'll just be able to get them back. Um, we'll see what he decides to do with the Weather Sea Treaty here. Like, in these spots, I do often just like using it as a pump spell. We'll see if uh, he rather just get get all the value from it or try and get the damage in right now. No, he's just looks like he's going for damage here. Yeah, just put it yeah, on the I, I like that. I like that. 
I like to play a lot. Yeah, I I I frequently do that in the late game, uh, especially if you have a rogue repossession like in hand, you could just get it back the next turn and do it do it all over again. Like like he's taking seven here, he, he is going to die to all this. Here's a five five that he can give trample to next turn. Yeah, the the, enlight the enlightenment uh, saving him this turn. Yeah, so uh, this, this is a very fun match. These players did did really go all out for their last match here, really to put on a show for us, I think. Uh, at 10 losses, you know, often at 10 losses is when you uh, start to get a little goofy with, with your builds, especially if uh, you're not you're not that close to top 8 uh, contention. You just sort of uh, tr try and do the craziest sort of over-the-top things that you can do. Uh, and uh, I think they both achieved that, I would say. Based on uh, oh, yeah. the unusual board states we are, we're being treated to here. So here's the Urborg repossession. Um, does he actually have a creature in his graveyard, though? I believe he I does. don't think so, but I I think the Urborg might be lethal. No, the thing is, you, you need a creature, though. Oh, you do need the creature. Yeah, you absolutely need a creature. It's the second half that you don't that you don't need to cast, but you absolutely oh, have interesting. to have a creature. Interesting. So you actually can't do it here. Uh, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I, I had just come to that realization that you absolutely need a creature. Um, I guess he can send in with his Jewel Thief here. It has to be blocked, even if it's getting eaten. Andrew doesn't know. Just, just to play Arbor Recession? Yeah, maybe. I mean, he could attack yeah, with his... We could attack with the 7-7, too. Like, the 7-7 has to get blocked, and the 3-3 three, three has to be blocked. And here's a 1-1, one, one, too, yeah. So blocks look to be... So 4-4 four, four goes there, 3-3 three, three goes there, 2-2 two, two goes there. Yeah, so he's going to get back a, a Hinata as a 2-2. Two, two. Oh, go. that's that's a nice draw. He's drawn to take up the shield. Ooh, okay. So he's going to be able to get some life here. Uh, here's a Hinata. And the take up the shield will cost uh, one, which will cost one less, which uh, which might come up as being relevant. Oh, uh, because Hinata is now a zombie, it has vigilance from yep. Ratatouille. Yeah, that's uh, that's what he does. He and and Ward, I believe. Uh. Oh no, he just he just gives himself Ward. No. Okay. These cards have a lot of words on them, and they're not cards we see that often. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. So so Radadrabic, uh, it gives, uh, it gives the zombies vigilance. Uh, it itself has vigilance and Ward, but it does not give Ward. So here we are. But. Uh, I believe it. I believe it continues to loop, though. So when your token dies, I believe it. You still get another token. I'm not sure, but uh, okay. guess what? We might be able to see through uh, if this game continues. Or no, no. It's um, the token it makes is not legendary, so it doesn't. Look... Yes. Okay. That that makes more sense. Yeah, because the, the token does not have the legendary uh, border there. So I don't think they would make cars that would loop by themselves. At least not in this modern era. I suppose not. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, he's Andrew's kind of just staring down fourteen power of trample next turn. Yeah, he's he's looking and he's saying, uh, "That's a lot of trample. What can I do? I need to kill everything now." Oh, well, he's gonna start by. Yeah, so gonna start by. Take up the shield's gonna be helpful. I think might be enough. What I really want to see off the top is a legend. Ah, that's a land. Oh no! <laughs> a legend off the top would have been uh, quite quite the spectacle here. Okay, so he has ten toughness on board, plus like two life links. That's a that's effectively twelve toughness, or twelve life against fourteen power trample. So still, so still dead then. Well, with the take up the shield, he's 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 alive. Right, he can gain six here, right? At the most. Yeah. So with ten toughness and like gain six, he'll be at two and he's won't still die. Just sending, he's still just sending like multiple creatures to the graveyard, though. Oh yeah, definitely. Because he needs to soak up the trample here. So even though one thing will get indestructible, uh, he's still just putting creatures in his graveyard and hoping for the best here. He doesn't actually have enough damage to take to kill Jota. Uh, no, because he well, no, not even. Yeah, he'll have ten even with uh, the I mean, take up the shield. 
Alternatively, you just everything blocks Jota, and you can suit up the Golden Tail Disciple, and that would also be enough. Uh, yeah, he can't cast both though of, of the tricks. No, unfortunately not. But I guess the suit up will actually get the Jota dead, which I think is the goal here. So I think he's gonna settle on uh, getting a lifelink boost here. Yeah, and take up the shield is in general a more valuable card than suit up because it can fade removal and also gain lifelink at any time. Yeah, it makes sense. So let's see what he decides here. He can do one or the other, but not to both. Well, I think the way he's blocked, it just means that he's seen he yeah. could see, he could use suit up. Yep. Yeah. So here he is. His golden tail will survive. Yeah. It'll just survive, but it'll survive. The mighty Jota ends like his to, life at a fox. Yeah. I would have liked to see a cascade trigger from Jota. Oh, yeah, but, uh, me, me too. Uh, I, I can't say I'm disappointed by this match. So this match has given us, uh, except for a uh, cascade trigger from Jota, it's given us basically everything else we could have imagined we would see and a bunch of stuff we would never imagine we'd see. Widespread thieving in play and uh, Zer animating multiple creatures and all that good stuff. So here's the Exhibition Magician, just putting more things into play. So, yeah, this, uh, uh, Andrew, this match is quite... Andrew gets, 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 another more, gets another couple turns here, it looks like. He has found Tamiyo's in completion now, so if he ever wants to get rid of something problematic, he now has the ability to do so. Well, here's a Luxurious Libation. With the trample, oh. that's got to be... Does Andrew have instance in his hand? He has take up the shield and Tamio's completion, so... So Tamio's completion will actually remove the trample uh, from the Jewel Thief, right? Yeah, but you could also just pump the thing that's not blocked for, like, yeah. immense amounts. So he's just going to go for it here. He's yeah, he, gonna... Andrew does have impulse to try and find something in response. Yeah, so Libation, uh, this card was very, very good in its format, and it has not, it has not gotten worse. This card is still just uh, excellent. Just an X pump spell, and you can get a 1-1 one, one left behind. I mean, in this case, the 1-1 one, one is not, not relevant, but uh, in a lot of games it is. So uh, just a great, great flexible card here. And he's going to try and try and lock this game up and stay alive to, to fight another day. So what is it? So so what exactly is um, it? It goes to eight. Yeah, it'll get a plus seven, plus seven here. Andrew actually can live. Okay. He because have... he has the take up. He has to take up the shield to make the Talos look at also gain life link. So he'll gain um, six. And, yeah. Uh, so if Ryan actually used that treasure, <laughs> he might have won. But he has a white. He has white spells. He has a white spells. Uh, at least one white spell in his deck. So, yeah, so this actually worked out uh, kind of okay. Uh, wow, <laughs> you know, what a nail! Both his creatures, and uh, Andrew lost neither. So uh, he's finding ways to stay alive here with his, uh, you know, surprise, surprise life boosts. Whether it was uh, gaining two extra life in the last turn, now gaining four extra life, and uh, Ryan just has a land in hand. So. Uh, you know, here's here's Andrew's chance to to get this game uh, turned around. Uh, he, oh, he, if he can start it's with this dragon. Yeah, you know, he he has to fade an outrider here, I suppose. Here, uh, here's a Garna, but that doesn't that that only does things uh, if Andrew attacks on the ground, which uh, he will not be doing. Oh well, here come here here come the hits. He, he has just drawn a Fable of the Mirror Breaker now. Okay, and he's just going to lock down that Garner to make sure he doesn't uh, die to the damage. <laughs> he uh, That is how he lost the first game, so uh, he's not going to he's not gonna repeat that that error here. He's just going to lock down this Garner, remove the abilities. Yeah, Andrew kind of has, like, just... I wouldn't say the nuts, but he has, like, really good cards in his hand. He has Zur and the Fable of the Mirror Breaker in his hand. Yeah, Tamiyo's completion, it's, it's as close to a, just a flat removal spell that we get in blue. There's nothing really yep. uh, comparable in um, Dominaria United, I would say. 
What has he drawn? He has a Lagrella here, which oh. uh, can do something. He can uh, get rid of, you know, his Garna. It'll come back bigger. And he can get rid of the, the dragon. So he's not taking damage there. But uh, he's, he's at 10 here, and there's still 4 power flying, or 5 power flying, even if the dragon goes away. So uh, he's, still, he's still in trouble here. So Andrew it, just it, uh, he found, he found exactly enough to stay alive both turns. Um, you know, very, very resourceful, you know, using his tricks to gain him just enough life to stay alive to, to draw some heavy hitters here. And, you know, with all this flying, he has a real clock on, on Ryan, who's only at 10. So, uh, you know, Ryan's maybe a, a little annoyed with himself that he didn't use the treasure there uh, to act, to get to get lethal. But, uh, oh, yeah. you know, he does have white cards in his deck, so he figured, well, if, if he does stay alive and I draw something like Lagrella, for instance, I want to be able to cast it. Yeah, what a game this has been. So the the reasons were correct, but uh, you know it turned out that it was it was incorrect in order to win the game because he had exactly enough life gain to stay alive at exactly one. So uh, very very uh, <laughs> interesting games we got. These are some of the most interesting games we've seen all league. Uh, like I said, usually when people are at ten losses and uh, you know a little bit away from from top eight contention, they'll uh, They'll go all out for their last couple games and just uh, just have fun with it. But uh, these decks are functioning, functioning, and they are doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing. Okay, so now he's drawn farewell again, not in the greatest of spots to use it because he's ahead yeah. on board. Yeah, not not a great farewell thing here. Uh, well, I'm not dead on board. Well, if he wants, you could you get attacked Garna, with his like Garna. disciple. Garnet doesn't actually trigger on itself dying. Ever. Actually, I don't hate if he just goes attack all and then farewells. Yeah, he'll gain, he'll gain two more life. He'll get a 6-6 six, six flying back. It'll, it can trade with the Garna and then get some advantage when it dies. It's get like even if, they kill the, even if they kill the dragon, they can like... They can bounce Garner back to their hand so they don't actually have the lethal attacker. Yeah, he can also just and hold then, off here. He can also just not... You know, just keep his board the way it is. But if you decide, like, you know, this is a way for me to win the game, because you get your opponent down to five, and then you have a 6-6 six, six flyer in play. Yeah. Well, the 6-6 six, six no. flyer is going to have to trade with Garno, though. How does it trade with Garno? Oh, because it's 6-5, yeah. going to be a 6-5, yeah. Six, five, yeah. But then you can get back two instances it's Archer Streamer Graveyard? Yep. Alright, so, looks like he's just attacking with the 4-3. He's gonna play. Oh, I see. Turn. So he gets to play Fable, and then he gets to hold up two Zer activations, so he can make like the Fable a three-three, and like the Golden Disciple even becomes bigger, power-wise. Right. So the it'll be a three-three instead of a two-three. Yes. Well, and it all uh, and it all doesn't matter because uh, <laughs> here's the card uh, that, that we all live in. We all live in fear of against the domain decks. You know, are are we uh, at five or less? You know, will an outrider kill us? Yes. So, uh, quite quite the matches we saw. Thank you to both those players for putting together uh, quite the collection of cards here for our uh, for our entertainment viewing. Um, so, congratulations to Ryan. He stays alive to fight another day, and uh, Andrew has fallen unfortunately, but uh, I'm sure we'll be seeing him in the next few leagues. Uh, so, that's it for this match, and uh, we'll be back for our uh, our final match in a little bit.